I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Scott Levan, a fractional CIO who's been working in IT for over 30 years, the last year in a fractional capacity. Scott focuses on serving small and mid-sized businesses between 25 and 100 employees. Scott's based in Spring City, Pennsylvania, which is outside of Philadelphia. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. We work with fractional executives to recreate their corporate income without the insane hours, building the business they want on their own terms. Jay Kingley, the co-founder and CEO of Maven, shares best practices along with tips and tricks on how you can build a robust pipeline to become fully booked with clients, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Enjoy today's episode. Welcome, Scott. Thanks, Jay. Great to be here. Scott, I'm a CEO with 75 employees, and I've never had someone dedicated to take care of my IT. We bump into each other for the first time at a business event. You've got a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch. Go! All right. So we help small to mid-sized businesses mitigate their risk of security breaches, and we help them scale their IT and their technology to enable their company to communicate both inside and outside the organization and drive revenue. And we do that primarily through people, process, and technology. I love the clarity, Scott. So let me ask my follow-on question. So why do your clients need what you do? Well, a lot of them are concerned or struggle with uh, security or security breaches. Uh, also, a lot of them are having trouble. Um, their revenue is growing, but they're having trouble keeping up with their revenue growth. Uh, and I can help them with that. Also, there's the cost of technology to run their business because it starts to become cost prohibitive. Scott, I hear people who are in the fractional CIO world talk about security all the time. And if I'm somebody in your target market, if I'm that guy you met at the uh, business conference who's got 75 employees, never really worried too much about IT, uh, I'm thinking security is an issue for the big boys. They're not going to waste their time coming after a small guy like me. What am I missing? Well, the funny thing is 66% of all cybersecurity breaches are with companies less than a thousand employees. They're small businesses, small and mid-sized businesses. And it's important for even the small guys who are easier to attack to be secure, just like the big guys without the big expense. So what's my prognosis if I'm one of the unfortunate uh, smaller guys in that 66%? That well, the, uh, gets nailed. Yeah, the funny thing is, is the same statistic of 66% of those that do get breached fail within the first year. They don't recover from that breach. So it's important that you are also looking and addressing your cybersecurity needs. So the, the scalability, I think, is obvious. If I really want to grow the systems, my infrastructure has got to be able to support that. It makes very little sense to build all that in day one that I start. But by the time I'm at the 50, 7,500 employees, that's got to be a consideration. And being able to do that in a cost-effective manner, you know, I get totally or, you know, every customer I add, I'm going to lose money on. But I think when you couple that with, you know, that, that's, that's the good side. But what I can't yes. do is take the risk of a breach, which is going to put me out of business. Yeah, that, that's correct. And unfortunately, everyone's susceptible to that. And no matter what size you are, that is uh, uh, the realization in today's world and the way everything works on the Internet and so forth. So being able to mitigate that is extremely important. So let me just, again, follow on and ask you if those are the issues that you can help me with, what outcomes can your clients expect when they work with you? Well, obviously, I work with you to help you to mitigate that risk of a security breach, not only through the technology, but also through policies, procedures, and controls, and security awareness training. Um, also, if I can decrease your 
percentage spend of IT to your revenue as you grow, that allows you to have higher profit and become uh, more efficient in what you're doing. And then also working with your IT technology, your processes, your procedures, uh, whatever technologies you have in place, I will look to integrate and automate that, eliminate the human so there are less chances of mistakes and also make you more secure, which allows you to scale. So, Scott, what I'm hearing you tell me when I'm scaling is my IT costs as a percent of revenues should actually fall as I get bigger. They shouldn't stay the same. They certainly shouldn't increase. And as you say, if that's true, I can certainly allow that to go straight to my bottom line. But the other thing I could do is take that cost savings, reinvest it back in the business, perhaps in marketing and sales, get even more customers. Yes, that's correct. The idea behind what I'm trying to help the businesses do is make sure that IT is an enabler to drive growth. And that allows you to focus on doing what you do best, support your customers, add new customers without worrying about, oh my gosh, I got to spend all this money to keep up with all the customers I got bringing or coming in. Let's allow that to scale instead of, oh, I need to throw more resources at it, which just drives your costs up. Many fractional, Scott, make the mistake of talking about their experience, talking about what they do. They make it all about themselves. And in effect, they're in the business of selling their time for an hourly rate. But those who are truly outstanding understand that what they're really selling is their intellectual property. You know, the value that comes from their know-how that really can move the needle for their clients. So I want to explore the key area of your intellectual property. I'm going to ask you this question. So what do you know that your clients don't know, but should because it moves the needle? Well, most of them believe that as they grow, they just need to throw more resources at it. Um, that's not what happens. And as you're a small business, you start to build silos to get things done because you're in startup mode. As you grow, and when you're five employees and you become 25 employees and we become 100 employees, but works when you're small, it doesn't work when you're larger. So being able to adapt and change and scale and integrate and automate as you grow is important. And a lot of companies fail to do that. And then when there are 100 employees, they hit a ceiling and they can't get below, uh, get above that with revenue or, or whatever they're doing from growth. I help them blow through that and continue to stay on top. Now, I want to ask you a point about differentiation. You know, what, what differentiates you? What makes you different from other fractional CIOs who could serve your target market? But I also want you to address another question, which I think a lot of people are sketchy about. So what is the difference between a fractional CIO and a fractional CTO? So I'll answer your latter question first. A fractional CIO is really focused on every part of the business and the technology and the process and procedures and controls as a whole for the entire business. So they're looking at your sales systems and softwares and processes, as well as your project management or implementation or your HR policies and procedures and controls. They work very closely together from start to finish. A CTO is primarily focused on usually product technologies or software development specifically for the business. Uh, They're not really focused on your internal systems and services um, like a CIO would be. But a CTO is more focused on development and driving those sort of things or the technology around whatever the business is doing to deliver to their customers. I'm going to interject here. Sure. So from the perspective of a CIO versus CTO, this is an and both, not an either or. That is correct. Now, Now talk to me about relative to the fractional CIOs, what makes you different? So one of the things that uh, is very important that a lot of people don't understand is there's two really core things to any business. One of them is being your onboarding process for 
uh, employees. That is very important for two reasons. One, for employee satisfaction and retention. And two, for security. And one of the things I focus on is trying to figure out ways to automate that and make that as seamless as possible. So that means working with HR and uh, uh, everyone through the organization. That makes them happy employees. They stay on. You spend less time recruiting. The other one is the customer onboarding process. That is just as important. How do you take a customer from sales to implementation to operations and support? Those two are key to any business and what you do. And I focus on automating them and eliminating the human out of those processes so less mistakes are made and they become more efficient and repeatable so you can focus on delivering for your customers. Now, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back... We'll learn a bit about Scott. As a fractional executive, you work with us to help you recreate your corporate income without working the insane hours. Our fractional flywheel service focuses on how to price, package, and position your years of experience and expertise, create and refine your go-to-market strategy so it's effective and efficient, and then nail your execution. Working with us, you will build a robust pipeline to become fully booked, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Maven's unique fractional catalyst service for those serving startups and early stage companies gets you acting like a venture capitalist in managing your business and as an entrepreneur when working with your clients. Achieve financial security and reward with clients who want you to take charge, ask for forgiveness, not permission, in an environment without all the politics and bureaucracy you find in corporate. Email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to learn more. Welcome back. We're talking to Scott Levan, fractional CIO, serving small to mid-sized businesses between 25 and 100 employees. Scott, let's find out a bit more about you. Let me start with, what are your biggest challenges in building your fractional CIO business? Well, I guess as any new business is trying to get recurring or uh, sustainable uh, business or uh, clients is the most difficult challenge. You know, get a lot of project work to start. So it's kind of a herky jerky type of uh, revenue stream, but getting a consistent revenue stream is probably the most challenging part of starting a fractional business. I hear that from a lot of fractionals who are in that first year or two. So based on your experience, what advice could you give to other fractional executives that are starting their practice? Well, one of the things that I did that seems to have really helped me in getting started and launched was networking a lot. I attended a lot of networking events. I joined a lot of networking groups, uh, met a lot of other fractionals like myself, either uh, even other fractional CIOs. We all have different uniques, unique talents and, and expertise. And what really works is what might work for me may not work for someone else, or they may have something that I don't have. And we're really good at referring business together, other fractional CFOs, CMOs, et cetera. Um, And also uh, uh, I've been able to work a lot with a lot of other managed services providers. And that's been huge. I offer something that they don't offer, which allows me to add value to their clients. I think those types of partnerships are often overlooked particularly when you're in the launch phase of your business. Now, Scott, let's, I want you to take a look back at your entire professional career. Share with us what's been your biggest accomplishment. Well, one of the things I would say is, is uh, one of the companies where I was CIO, I worked with uh, when I got there, very well-documented processes and procedures. Um, they had everything well documented. The problem was it was all manual. It didn't take long for me to figure out as the company started growing that running the IT group, it wasn't sustainable. And that the best way to, to solve the problem at the time, what they did was throw more people at it. Well, that's not what is a very well scalable process. So I looked and worked over an 18-month period to automate that entire process from start to finish on onboarding new employees using those well-documented processes, putting the right technologies in place. So when an employee was hired, their laptop got ordered, all the software was automatically down to it, downloaded to it when they logged in. 
They got all the information they need. All their accounts were created. The IT staff did not have to do that. So we were able to focus on supporting the production systems and doing desktop support as things broke instead of growing the company. The company added 300 employees over the next three years, and I hired one additional IT staff. Now, that is impressive. Scott, I'm an equal opportunity kind of guy. (laughs) So it's only fair that I now ask you, what's your biggest professional failure? But what did you learn from it? And how did it shape what you do today? Well, one of the things I did, uh, funnel enough, at the same company is we migrated for, and uh, our, our data center was online with AWS and it was costing us a lot of money. We decided to migrate to our own infrastructure to save money and become more efficient and allow us to scale. The first time we tried to do that migration for the production systems, it failed. Um, and it was a miserable failure. And it wasn't that we didn't test. We actually had migrated other systems. Uh, we migrated our test system, our dev system, and our UAT system. So I thought we were in good shape. And then we went to production, and production didn't work at all. Uh, what I learned was is production isn't the same as your test systems and that you need to fully. We didn't do a full test of the production migration because we were afraid we would impact the production system. Looking back at it, we probably should have done a a full production test before we actually tried to do the migration instead of trying to limit what we were doing to not impact production. We should have just taken a change window, run the test, made sure it worked, and then go forward. Now, the good news is we found the issue the following day and ended up being a Microsoft bug. But we had to reschedule it with our customers. And uh, uh, I will never forget that. And it was a long, sleepless night. I will tell you that much. I bet that's the type of mistake you only make once. It is true. <laughs> Scott, what makes you great at what you do? I'm the type of person that uh, likes to fix things. Um, I look for things that need to be fixed. I look at that. I try to figure out an innovative way to solve that problem. And that's what I like to do. I like to help diagnose problems, uh, figure out what's causing it, the root cause, and then identifying it, coming up with a solution, a plan, and uh, implementing it. And then I get a lot of satisfaction seeing it get completed. One of my favorite questions for my guests is to ask you, what happened in your life, personally or professionally, that most explains why you're doing what you're doing today? Well, it kind of goes back to my childhood. My grandfather was an electrical engineer, and I became fascinated by what he was doing at that time and learning more about what he did. And we spent a lot of time together. And I got it early on in my head that I was going to go to school and become an electrical engineer. And that's what I did. I went to Penn State, I got my electrical engineering degree, and I came out of school and I started working in data communications on the network side. And um, back then, um, it was a little bit different back then. We weren't, we didn't have all the fiber and so forth. It was uh, T1s and stuff like that, for those who know what those are. Um, and it just grew from there. I just fell in love with um, networking and so forth. And I started there. And as I've grown up through my career, I've, I've expanded my capabilities and learning. Firewalls, routers... Um, servers, laptops, software, you name it. Scott, I don't know if I ever told you this, but my mother is an alum of uh, Penn State uh, from the 1950s. Ah, so nice. So we are? Penn State. Okay, you pass. Yes. <laughs> uh, any regrets? No, not really. I mean, I think if I had to do it all over again, I would do the same thing. I love what I do. I I love technology. I, I, I love helping people. I really have a passion for helping small businesses who can't really afford the expertise that comes with a CIO or a CISO type person. And it's just a lot of fun. And being able to do that for a lot of different people is really enjoyable. So we're coming to the end of the year before you know it. So as you look out over the next 12 months, 
What's your journey going to look like? Well, hopefully my business continues to grow. Um, I'm now starting to um, also incorporate some generative AI into what we're doing with a lot of our clients, uh, working with several uh, organizations in that. But I'm really hoping to continue to drive and have more uh, subscription-based uh, customers, which uh, is starting to happen, and, and we're kind of excited about that. I'm sure we've got folks in our audience that would love to reach out learn a little bit more about your intellectual property and your thoughts on scalability and cost effectiveness, not to mention cybersecurity. What is the best way for folks to contact you? So they can reach out to us at info at x86services.com, or they can give us a call at 215-326-9499, or just go to the website at uh, www x86services.com and leave us a note on the contact us, us contact us page and we'll be more than happy to get back to you. And we'll drop Scott's contact info in the show notes, both for the video and the podcast. Scott, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and on our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and your family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned.